Our first guest tonight is an Oscar-winning actor, director, and real-life action hero with a new documentary about another real-life action hero named Zelensky. It's called Superpower. Where, where does it end? I mean, what does he want? What does he? What is the... He wants to. He wants. He wants us to be dead. He 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 hate Ukraine. He he, he hate us. And we we don't know why. It's, it's like, like the person who you see. know all the life once coming with guns to your house and practically in your eyes killed your family. It's it's the same. Superpower is on Paramount Plus now. Please say hello to Sean Penn. First of all, the documentary is great. It's really incredible. You invited me to a screening, and uh, it was just gripping. Um, where were you in that clip that we just saw? In, in, you were in the bunker, right? Yeah, that was the... We had met with the president the day before. It was the first time that I'd met him face-to-face. -face. We'd met on Zoom before, but... And we met as we had decided, without cameras the very first time, because I, if he was going to participate in the documentary, I wanted him to be... Um, you know, unguarded in a way that might not be with a typical news team or something like that. And um, so we had a very good meeting and the next, and he committed to start uh, shooting the documentary the next day. We went back to the hotel and by the time my eyes closed, the rocket started coming into Kiev. And then, you know, the, that and the sirens sort of escorted us into the morning. And then we got a surprising call from the president's office that this, that he was going to continue and, and, and go ahead and have the first session of shooting. It is an incredible series of events that play out because you did not go over there knowing that, that Russia was about to attack Ukraine. You went right. to, and correct me if I have any of this wrong, to make a documentary about Zelensky. Well, even and, and it was before any news of a Russian buildup. You right. know, we, we know that, that Ukraine had been at war, defensively at, at war in the, in the East since 2014. But by and large, a, 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 demo, a growing democracy in, in peace, most of the country. So when we went, we were going to do a kind of lighthearted look at a comic actor. Who yeah, he's become, a comedian. He started out as a comedian and yeah. became and, president of this country. Yeah. Did you, now, did your crew, so you bring a crew that thinks they're shooting a lighthearted documentary, and suddenly they are a, a news crew in wartime, and you guys get, and you guys get a warning from the State Department, the United States State Department, saying, get out of there, it's not safe, go home right now. Yeah, well, in fact, we'd started, we did start with a crew that would have that, 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 that expected the one thing, and we made our first trip in November 2021. Um, and we didn't see the president on that trip, and, and the, the buildup had begun to come to pace. Everyone knew that coming over. Most of us, and I talked about in the film, didn't think it was going to happen. Mm. Certainly not in November. Uh, everybody in intelligence thought it was going to happen, right. but the rest of us didn't. Um, and then uh, we went, when it was time to go back, we were using only, uh, it, it, my partners and I, of course, were going to follow whatever story that we got. But the other people were, all, were Ukrainian uh, production crew, and Ukrainians don't want to leave Ukraine. They want to do anything they can to hold on to and fight for freedom. And, and those who work in film production are no different. And they had a belief that what we were there to document might be helpful. Right. And that's Zelensky does seem very cognizant of that, that it's important for yeah. him, even though a war just started the day before, to stop and to talk to you and to explain the situation. Because, of course, we are very insulated. We don't know what's going on in other places. And this came as, a, as you said, as a, 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 bit, a surprise, an unpleasant surprise, yeah. uh, this invasion. On, and you talked to him about um, yeah, this guy had an apartment in Russia. It's like the idea that he's now at war with this country is insane. Yeah, it's, it, it is 
so horrible what's happened and, and, and such it's such a the you know we 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 thought that this when he came in that day, let's say, um, in that piece that you showed, it it was as though he was born for this moment. There's something so incredibly genuine about him. But my goal, once we understood what was happening and that we were no longer making the lighthearted tale of this president, was to give a context that I wouldn't have had just watching the news. And I feel like so many times when I've gone into um, interesting places. Dangerous um, places, yeah. That there, you know, I've, I've, if, you, if an act, if me, it, it's the criticism comes anyway. But if I have a camera, if I'm, it just looks like, oh, this guy's here for a photo op or whatever. And so I've been kind of not, um, you know, I've got nothing to show of most of those trips. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, maybe this would be a good time to kind of say to somebody who's, you know, maybe. I feel very lucky to financially be able to travel. Uh, I'm, and I, I, because I'm a famous person, I can get access to people sometimes that, that others might not. And I thought, well, why not, you know, offer to people that come along in my backpack and we'll take a look at what happens. And I feel like it does, the whole intention of the film is to give the average American, really, it's really, I hope it will be a value outside of America, but I want the United States to understand its sacred debt to this country and to the aspiration of this country and to feel it and see how the, the, that familiar thing and the way that they're upholding a sense of unity that we've absolutely lost and have to get back, right? And so uh, even though, you know, I've talked about this before, I, it, it, it's not a surprise to most people that I'm an opinionated person but I worked very hard in the editing of this film to, you know, not hide that. It's there. But anyone who doesn't agree with me or is prone not to, the point of the film is that, you know, you can kind of say, you know, okay, I'm not that interested in what he's saying now about this. But you'll see your own familiar place in this story and in this place. And, and that's what I, and, and the parallel and the way that I think it can be a kind of salvation for what's going on in our country is invaluable. You see old people, you see young people, you see, you took, there was a, a scene which was really interesting, you took a group of Ukrainian fighter pilots to see Top Gun, to see Top Gun Maverick. And, and they loved the movie, and, and, um, but e even in, with all of this madness going on, with all of this conflict, you're able to go to the movies with this guy. And then, tragically, one of the, the pilots that you were with, who you become, became friendly with, was, was killed in action. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, and that is really personalizes it. And this guy, Zelensky, is also just an incredible person, isn't he? He is. I, I do want to circle back to yeah. um, Andre Juice was his call sign. But yeah. I, I, I've been asked by people in my circle and sometimes out of my circle, I suppose. I do step outside the house sometimes. Um, uh, you know, what's he like? And, and of any head of state, of any politician, of any head of a large company, given a little time, you start to feel the script and the spin. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, they're getting through the day and they have an agenda. They don't know if you're understanding what they, when they said it the first time, want to hammer in so that, so that you're for it. Uh, there's never a moment with him that's not genuine, deeply genuine. He's is something that's happening. I, I think that, and he's a fa the Ukrainians at this point in time in history, it's sort of like, it's sort of like what I imagine the Beatles were coming out of, out of Liverpool. You know, that special thing happens once at a certain time. And right now, Ukraine is that place. Has he seen the documentary? <laughs> yeah, he saw, he saw a rough cut of it. What did he think? Well, yeah, I'm sort of very grateful that he's a filmmaker because he, he if, if anyone sees the film, which you can see on Paramount Plus uh, now, um, it, it's called Superpower. 
Um, uh, he, um, he doesn't come off great in the first half hour of the movie. Yeah, he's unpopular. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of he's doing a lot of silly mm -hmm. uh, comedy stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that changes, of course. Yes, it does. Up. So he's stuck but, with it. That's what he, you're saying. Well, when I walked into the office, he had he had watched it at six thirty that morning. He's busy during the day, I suppose, and got it over with in the morning. And I was brought back to his office, and as he he was sitting with. Um, his chief of staff, Andre Yermak, who's also in the film. And he, he stood up and he looked at me and he said, I'll bet you're glad that I watched the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah. You were, I'm sure. He recovers well in the film. Yeah, he does. He does <laughs> recover well. Sean Penn is with us. His movie is called Superpower. We'll be right back. We're back with Sean Penn, Nicole Byer. You know, I, uh, when, when we screened the movie, your daughter was there, and she was so proud of you. I thought it was very touching. And I wonder, when you were in a situation, you've been in many situations. Like, I know you went to Haiti. How many times were you in Haiti after the earthquake? Well, I lived there for nine straight months, the first stretch. But I've been, I've been going back and forth to Haiti for the last four, 13 years. You were in um, New Orleans uh, just after, during the Hurricane Katrina situation. Do you, with your kids, do you have like a schedule? Like, I'm going to check in every day at 2 p.m. and if, you know, other, and worry if I don't? How do you do that? No, my kids, they, now they know, so I, now I can say it freely. But I, basically what I would do with them is um, tell, tell them I'll, I'm going to be just fine. And then I would call my assistant and say, everything is just fine. And, uh, you know, just lie. Uh -huh. and, everything's good. <laughs> and I had it because because I had an experience in, I had gone to Iraq 2002, but pre, before the war started, and then I went back 2003. My kids were just unhappy about the idea that I was going. And, 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 and at one point, uh, I remember kind of, you could get used to when the lulls and uh, there was a lot of uh, explosion of ordnance, and a lot, most of that was at the airport. The U.S. was taking unexploded ordnance. But you never knew exactly. And a lot of gunfire was just vertical, different neighborhoods saying, you know, we've got bite here. And so you never really knew when there was an engagement, when not just from the sound. Mm -hmm. But you know, I mean, you do know. I came to know that you really do know when it, but so... <laughs> One time, because the daytime, it was, it was a lot of lulls, I got a sat phone. I thought, this is the moment. Kids are home from school. I can call real quick. It's usually a very quiet time of day. I went to a wall, and I was like, just as both kids got on the phone, it, it, there was a war on the other side. I just rap, 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 rap. And um, my son said, what is that, Dad? So I never called them from ever from any place again. What did you no, tell them? Did you lie, or how do you handle that? When I think I did lie. I don't think it was successful, but I, I, I might have said, oh, it's, it's nothing. And what if they started? Know, now they're adults. Where? If they started going to places like um, Ukraine and Iraq, etc., would you approve well, of that? We, you know, we've got hundreds of thousands of young men and women who are doing that to protect our country um, all the time. Mm -hmm. and so, you know, my, my children, I, I prefer they're not in dangerous places. Like, um, I remember being in Ukraine and seeing what happened with, uh, on television with Chris Rock and, uh, at, at, at the Academy Awards and Will Smith, and I thought, you know, <laughs> I didn't like them being in that dangerous place. <laughs> Do you think this kid had any idea one day he'd be in, uh, he'd be shooting a documentary in the middle of a war? That's you, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, yeah, did you ever have yeah. any idea that you'd be doing anything like this? I know you wanted to be an actor, but I, you know what? I just because we started it, and I don't want to forget simply out of day because the film is dedicated to that uh, fighter pilot that, that you saw. Juice, yes. Yeah. And we, when we went, just because, you know, it's also nice to celebrate the, the, the uh, humor of somebody when they've sacrificed like he has. 
So when Tom, when Tom Cruise ejects over the desert during the training, ends up in the desert, he's filthy, and he makes his way across there and finds this oasis, this diner. And he opens the door, he, could he come in the diner, and the place looks at him. Juice leaned over to me during the movie, he said, that's why I always take my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever call Tom Cruise and go like, hey, I saw you jump off that building. I'm in a war. <laughs> I think he's, he takes a lot more risks than I do, <laughs> yeah. frankly. You do the statistics, the time I spend in different places, I'm pretty clever about the risk benefit, I think. And, yeah. But no, he, he goes all out. Well, I'm guy. glad you went over there and documented this story because it is interesting. And of course, you know, with all the terrible things happening with what's going on in Israel, um, which is certainly deserving of all of our attention, we cannot forget what is also going on in Ukraine. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, these things, the reason that they both matter as much at the same time is it, it, it all goes to the heart of what world are we preserving for our kids tomorrow? It, it, if we it, tolerate this kind of um, militant extremism, this it's even, I don't even know the words for this <laughs> horror. But Terrorism is a, is a good word for it. it. It's not good enough. It's not strong enough now. I, I you know, I, it, that's why I slipped. I think the, the good words are in that category. But it's also about our kids' future economically. The investment that we are, as General Milley said the other day on 60 Minutes, the investment that we're gonna have to make in our military, in wars that continue. Certainly, Putin will not stop with Ukraine, and anyone that believes that that will happen is, is may as well not love their children. Yeah, yeah. Well. It's great to see you. Great the to see uh, you documentary too. is called Superpower. It's on Paramount Plus. Sean Penn, everybody. We'll be back with Nicole Byer.